I was living the dream. You know, I was living the dream. I've lived the dream, I've worn that badge. I know what that badge means, you know. There's a certain pride, I guess, in, in me that I've played for the club I supported. And there isn't many that can say that. I was born in Jamaica. I came to England when I was 10 and moved to Sparkbrook, um, at Grantham Road, Sparkbrook, which is like a 10 minute walk from uh, St Andrews. It was strange. Um, I remember seeing the snow for the first time walking down uh, Stratford Road, you know, from the top of Spark and walking back down to where we lived. Then my uncle took me to St Andrews, um, I think 70, 73. And I just got a feel for it. I used to go with, 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 with mates and try and sneak in at the back end of the cop, but couldn't always get in and whatnot. Um, I just remember the smell of the, uh, the burger vans and all that, like the onions and stuff like you know, you, you do. And, the thing, the thing that struck me about it was the atmosphere. I didn't know any different anyway, but the atmosphere, it was always sort of vibrant and lively. Because I was a football, I can put it, people could say football nut, because I was one of these, I was really in the shoot, I was really match weekly. My walls were covered in football stickers and football posters and what have you. So the football, Alarak if you like, as well as, you know, wanted to, wanted to play. So it was in me. Um, if I wasn't reading about it, I was playing it. If I wasn't playing, I was watching. Sunday mornings, really, we played a lot of football over at Farm Park. Sometimes we'd go down to Calpell Park in Borsalith, or sometimes we'd go up to Spark Hill Park, you know, so wherever the game was, where the mass was, that's what we used to do. I was playing the centre forward at the time. I scored a lot of goals, um, combination with the school team and the Sunday team. Silly Regis wannabe, uh, bless him. Um, to a centre half, um, with some good, got some good players. Lads who had been to clubs, um, and I was the last one to go to a club, and I was the only one to sign pro for any club. But you know, the funny thing was, <laughs> I was at Blues. I, tr I tried at Blues for a while while I was a schoolboy. All we did, I always remember it. All we did, we went to St Andrews twice a week, Tuesdays and Thursdays, for the evenings. And all I did was a lap St Andrews, just run around the pitch. And then we'd go inside, I think that might be a me part of the media room now, that used to be a little gym. And that was, we used to go and kick the ball against the wall in there. And that's what we did. And that was my trial at Blues. The thing was, and I'm really proud of this, one of Blues' all-time great players is known as Gentleman Joe Bradford. He saw me playing in a cup final on Sunday morning, gave me the Man of the Match award. That's signed to me, Gentleman Joe Bradford, for the Man of the Match. And he was a Blues record goal scorer. So you, you can see the, um, for me as a Blues fan as well, wow. So he's, he's recommending me to go to Blues for a trial. I'm, I'm, I'm buzzing now. But unfortunately it didn't work, it didn't work out at the time. Um, signed for the Villa, boom, boom, boom. Won the FA Youth Cup with them. So I, I got to play against some really big names, you know, some really big names. Um, European Cup winners, you know, from, from Man United, John Aston, people like that, I played against those guys in my infancy. Then I'm playing against Gary Lineker. Lynx was a year older than me, I knew him from Leicester, the youth teams. And it was one where I just thought, you know, I know, I know I'm ready for the first team. I just felt I was ready for the first team. I think it's about, a week after they won the European Cup, I got a call of Bill, Bill Shorthouse, to say, gave me Ron Saunders' number, he wants to speak to you. And I rang the gaffer. Blah, 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 blah. I want to sign you, I want you to come. Blah, blah, blah. And it was in the September, but I played for the start of the season, I played in the reserves at Wolves, and I'd done my ankle, so I was injured. So when I made my debut for Blues, I was actually injured. <laughs> But I wasn't going to give it that. I haven't got words to describe it. I haven't got words to describe it. I think about that day a lot when I'm reflecting about career. I think we need, at one point, we needed somewhere like five wins out of seven to stay up. Did it? Did it come through? Went, went, went away and won a Southampton and places like that. I won a Coventry. So there were, there were special days, really. Um, seeing the Blue Noses down at the Dell in particular. 
I always remember a very close game and you know, shielding and goal and stuff like that. And what have you. It's a good side Southampton then, Mark Wright and Steve around and Steve Williams and all that. Some good players. So we had to you know, like I said, we had some good players. We had some good players. And people didn't like playing against us. You know, I don't you ask any any team from that era didn't like playing against us. You know. I remember we went to um we went across to the Albion one game. We were up against Sulerini, Scott vs. Soul and Gary Thompson. They these are two big powerhouse centre forwards. And it was a physical battle, me and Billy. Um, and we won the game 1-0. You know, but it was a it was a it was a game when you came off you felt so proud of you know, beating your local rivals, but you felt so proud because you had to win the game. You had to earn the right to win the game. You know, local derbies we are never lost local derbies. You know, we are never lost local, local derbies. We lost one um, that I can recall um, against Villa at Villa Park. I did all right in the game. Um, did all right in the game, but I missed the penalty. If you can call it a penalty, I, I, I just on the on the, the penalty, just changed my mind. So he saved it, and then obviously they scored. Peter with ball got stuck in the water. And obviously, it's well documented that the bit of uh, aggro after the game, during the game. The one that stood out more than anything else was Steve McMahon's challenge on Kevin Broders, which I felt was out, was, was out of order, naughty. And he actually finishes Kev's career. Kevin didn't really recover from it in terms of that, the tackle, the bad tackle. But we were defending the, um, the north end, the away end. And I went for a tackle and uh, played a, 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 a legitimate tackle, no, no, no offence took place, but I wiped the, rep, the linesman out as well, because it was a wet day and he just skidded through and I wiped the linesman out as well, because everything was going. Everything was being taken. You're making the tackle, everything was going that day. You know, your ferocious tackle and whatnot. No caution, no nothing, not even a word, but the linesman had to jump out of the way, <laughs> you know. Um, then obviously, at the end of the game, things were said, and I thought, to this day, I, I thought Steve, Steve McMahon said something derogatory towards me. Not in a racial connotation, but something derogatory. Um, you know, to, 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 towards my mom and, and I just reacted. And I leaned forward and um, they say, I was saying, drop the nut on him. I got one match ban. What game did I miss? Liverpool away. Never forgotten it. Learned a big lesson. Get sent off stupidly. You miss a Liverpool away. <sighs> We'd already beat them the pre in the, in the, in the, at, at, uh, at uh, St Andrews in the Boxing Day, and they were giving me pelters and the coins you've been throwing down at me, and you've been a reject and da 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 da. And a former club, sell out 50 or 30, the European champions at the time. Um, and we, you know, I left them in September. Here I am, Boxing Day, playing against them. Former teammates or what have you. There was a lot of pressure on me. A lot of pressure on me. And then the corner, and for some unknown reason, the corner came. And I'd, I, was no, I was designated to go to the back post, but I didn't go right in the back post. I sort of went and I held my, my, um, my movement a little bit. And I think it was, I can't remember if it was Big Mick, we had two Big Micks, Mick Ferguson and Mick Farford who were playing up front together. And they're both 6'3", six, 6'4", six, six, guys. And the ball, but they're up against Evans and McNaught was 6'3", six, 6'4", six, anyway. And Jimmy played for England, Jimmy Rimmer, so the top keeper. And Jimmy's the top, top keeper, Jimmy Rimmer. And the ball broke into the box. And I just remember this, try, I've tried to bend it, but I've hit it with, with, with what they call a bit of swaz. I've hit it, and it's gone in. The far right on corner. So as I'm looking at the goal, it's gone in there, you know. Of course, I'm, I'm, I'm ecstatic. And there's a picture. I haven't got a copy of this picture. I need to get a copy of it because my grandkids have keep on about it. Because I've seen it somewhere they can't get. And there's a picture of me celebrating um, with like, like that. And then my biceps at the time was pumping. Um, you know, sort of thing. So it's that that picture I need. To, I need to try and get um, from just for the grandkids and stuff. And 
Yeah, it was. Uh, and then Ian Anderson got rest his soul, scored, and I think Big Mick Ferguson scored as well. So we won the game three 0 I think it was. Um, so yeah, it was. Uh, and obviously the, we, 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 uh, we, we were buzzing, and our fans were buzzing, and rightly so, because you don't beat the European champions. There were European Cup holders at the time, and we won the game three 0 Thoroughly, thoroughly, thoroughly enjoyed my career playing for my club. Um, didn't want to leave, obviously. Didn't want to leave, um, but the manager at the time, Ron, said to me, we were in Holland. The club was in financial difficulties, as it always was. So I agreed to go to Pompey. And then the minute I agreed to go to Pompey, I just said, I need a minute. And I broke down. And then he said, are you okay? He said, don't you want to go? I said, I don't want to leave Blues, but I need to leave Blues. Coming towards the end of the career, I went, I went up to Scotland for a couple of years at Dundee and I was helping out with their, their young lads, developing the young lads, but you know, get the youth thing going again because they didn't have one to be helped to get it going again. And then I went to, back to Stoke, because my family was still in the Stoke area, so I went back to Stoke and I started to take their under 13s from the 14s. And that's why I also the young, young coaches, any opportunity is a good opportunity, go and take it. So I was doing it part time. So I took the Kenny Cabin manager and the 18s coach. Did that for a period of time. And then the call, the call from England came twice. I said I rejected it twice. And then the third time, I spoke to some people who are valued their, their, their wisdom and they said, if you don't take it, you'll always regret it. So I took it, the England thing on. And it was good. It was a, it was a terrific uh, period of my sort of development. I worked with some terrific uh, coaches. Um, people like John Pika, Kenny Swain, the old Pompey Villa teammate. Brian Eastick, who was a Kelly manager at Blues for a while, and Martin Thomas, old Blues keeper as well, Stuart Pierce and Gareth, Gareth Southgate. So I worked with some terrific people over a period of time. Um, I was blessed that uh, I was able to oversee a lot of uh, talented boys um, coming through. One of my best achievements with England, people might not re recognise it, in my opinion, because we had a lot of success in terms of lads coming through, which is what it was always about. And this is how I, I, I value what I did for the FA, for the country. And then what I did, I decided to go with younger. And that was the value of what I was doing, working with the younger ones, so I could see when they were coming through. So I, the likes of Harry Kane, Connor Cody, that year group, 93, had won under 17s. So I jumped them up to give them that added experience. We had a good side. Alex Oxley Chamberlain, the young one, brought him up. Kane, the young one, brought him up. Cody, the young one, bought him up, 93, bought him a lot of them up. So the, the fruit of the pudding, if you like, came later, when a lot of those went on to play for the 21s and the seniors. World Cup in, in Russia in 2018, I think it was, 2018 Russia World Cup. The 24, 25 man squad, I had 18 lads that I'd worked with at some stage in the England development. I worked with them. When we got to the final, the European final in 2021, there was something like 15, 16 in that that I'd worked with. That's the pride I take. That's the pride I take. What have you made of the past sort of few months of blues and you know, do you see us on a you know a better trajectory than we have been on recently? Absolutely. Absolutely. I was uh, like all blues fans, you, you you follow things, you know. I have not been able to go to the to the ground as much as I'd like to because of my work, um, and working on Saturdays as well. Um, but you can see the feel-good factor. I speak with my pals, it will go regularly. The feel-good factor is there. What I feel the new people have bought, the new owners have bought into the club, is a sense of optimism. They brought the club back together, where I think, I don't think I know. As a blue nose, you feel like the club belongs to you again. The club's gone on, it's done it before. So it's there, so it's not potential, it's there. But it's got the ability to, do, to achieve even more now. And that's what, there's nothing I'd love to see than the club, like all Blues fans, for the club to maximise this opportunity.